So for this one, what are you doing? First thing that you're doing, convert the impedance. So Z1, if you convert this, we had one over J omega C. This reduces to minus J 0 0.4 ohms. In the same way, we get the second impedance due to that inductor, it's J omega L. And when you substitute with angular frequency as 10, this is going to be J5. You combine the impedance of the capacitor and the resistor because they're in series. So I'll say Z1 and the resistor. Since they're in series, we're going to add them. So it's going to be five minus J 0 0.4. So Z in we are looking for is going to be the, uh, since they, they're going to be in parallel, this will be in parallel with this. So now it's going to be the product of the ones in parallel. That's a five minus J 0.4 multiplying the J5 over the sum five minus J 0 0.4 plus J5. So the numerator, when you multiply, that's going to be J25. Then this is going to be J and J, that will be uh, to turn this negative into a positive, but five and 0 0.4, it will be two. In the denominator, we're going to have five. This is where we made the mistake earlier when we subtract it, so remember what we have, I'll not subtract just yet, I'll say minus a plus J5, then minus 0 0.4 with the J here. So this is where I made a mistake area, where we ended up writing this as a negative, but clearly you can see that, that is going to be a positive value. So this is going to be five plus J 4.6. So I hope you've seen clearly where we made the mistake area. So from here now, this is where we can, we need to get the complex conjugate. So we're multiplying five minus J 4.6. So when you do the same thing in the numerator, we have 10, to multiply is 4.6, we get, it's going to be minus there because of that negative. So we get minus J 9.2. And then now 25 multiplies five, we get positive um, J 125. And then now um, 25 multiplies 4.6. We get 115. It's supposed to be negative, but J and J squared will give us a, a, a negative as well. Should change this to positive, so you get positive one one five. Five squared is twenty five. Then J squared there is going to be negative as well, making this positive. Then four point six squared. This is going to be twenty one point one six. Now we simplify the uh, the denominator will be 46.16. In the numerator, we have 10 uh, plus that 115, we get 125. And then now we have J, and then you have 125 minus 9.2. We get 115.8. So now when we divide 125, divided by our denominator, which is 46.16, we get the real part as 2.7, you can say 0, 7, so on, or 2.71. And then the imaginary part is going to be J. Now I have 115.8 divided by 46.16. And that gives us 2.5. So when you're doing this in a quiz where you are um, you're in a hurry to get the answer, uh, first thing here, like I pointed out earlier, 
knowing that this is the difference of two squares and how a difference of two squares simplifies the square of the first term minus the square of the second term, uh, that would be very helpful. Secondly, the minute I divide this divided by this to get to 2.7, I will go to the answers and check. Is that answer there? In this case, you see that that answer is there and it's the only one. So once I realize that it's the only one with the 2.7 in the first place, there's no need for me to even continue to get the rest of it. I can end here and conclude that my answer is A. If maybe there was another one with the same 2.7 in the first position, then I'll go on to try to see what the next one will be so that I know which one it is. But I think when I did this earlier, all I did was once I found 2.7, I concluded that the answer is this. Any questions there? Okay, so we move on to the next one.